George Friedrich Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks, being enjoyed by the firework factory dog. Here they make gunpowder, an invention of the ancient Chinese. The Chinese began with a spot of oil and potassium nitrate, made from urine, or wee wee. This yellow stuff isn't urine, this is sulphur from the mouths of volcanoes. Back in the medieval days, the English church made a fortune by selling gunpowder. They claimed that by using the wee-wee of bishops, it was made far more explosive. Filthy old carbon completes the mix, and adding metals makes the powder burn with all sorts of sparks and exciting colours. Outside, the factory dog is doing a very important job in the garden, keeping a sharp eye out for rabbits near the powder stores. Rabbits are the sworn enemy of powder makers, as they burrow into the soil heaps that protect passers-by from accidental explosions. This terrible havoc was wreaked by rabbits before the dog arrived. Well, that's her story anyway, and she's sticking to it. What on earth's going on here? It looks like the powder maker is having a fit. No, he's been mixing the powder safely in a plastic bag, so it doesn't blow up in his face. There are many dangers in the firework factory, not least of which is that of inhaling the dry powders. Without his gas mask, this firework maker would run the risk of contracting powder maker's lung, a horrible condition characterised by a highly explosive cough. This is the room where they make Roman candle pellets. The gunpowder has already been mixed with some metal or another, such as copper to make it burn bluey-green, or titanium for bright white sparks. Copper's used again here on the tips of steel rods. It's a softer metal, so the powder can be squashed without sparking. And out of the bottom come nice neat little pellets. Of course, the cardboard tube is one of the most important devices to be found on the firework factory floor. The tube is sealed up at one end by hammering down a mixture of clay and grit. Some tubes are meant to explode, while others shoot flames and sparks from the top, or if you turn it upside down, from the bottom. Here's our friend with a tray full of his pellets. On the tray, he also has some brown fibre spacers, each with a little powder fuse inside. The spacers allow the candle to blow up one bit at a time. Powder, charges, pellets and spacers are layered into tubes so that one pellet after the other is set alight and blasted up to burn over our heads. And that's a Roman candle for you. Goodness knows why the Romans wanted exploding candles. Very distracting. Here we can see another kind of pellet, rocket blasted starbursts. This chap is famous throughout the factory for his ability to roll the smoothest starbursting balls in the business. For the moment, however, they look like rabbit droppings. And so to lancing, the method of connecting hundreds of little powder-filled tubes, they're called gerbs by the way, with fast-burning fuse. The gerbs will all burn together with a bright light and spell out a message. See? At the really big firework displays, Electricity is used to light the fireworks exactly when they're needed. As well as allowing for split-second timing, electricity also means that the fireworks can be let off from a very safe distance. Just as well when you're detonating fireworks the size of dustbins. Two other things you need to worry about are keeping the sparks from one firework setting off another and keeping out the rain. Both of these problems are settled with generous applications of aluminium foil. 
It's a lot of hard work, but when the sun goes down... They're totally wicked! Around the world, people let off fireworks for all sorts of reasons. The Chinese celebrate their new year with fireworks. They make as much noise as possible to scare off a mythical man-eating reptile they call Nyan. The Americans let off a load on Independence Day, and the British remember Guy Fawkes, who tried to blow up King James and the Houses of Parliament. All thanks to those dusty old men in dusty old rooms, filling their little brown tubes with an evil black powder that was once made from Bishop's wee-wee. Hard to believe, but it's true.